Good evening, everybody. We're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, first of all, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Ellen McClure. I'm the Director of Human Resources for the Conquer Falls City Schools. I'm here to welcome all of you tonight, and uh, we're so happy to see you, especially on this beautiful night when we're finally not getting any snow and the sun is shining here in Northeast Ohio. So um, I also wanted to thank you for doing your homework. Um, we had over 200 people that uh, responded to the homework assignment about the architecture, so that was absolutely wonderful to see that. And then on top of that, we had 10,000 people, almost 10,000 people that have now logged in to take a look at the assignment to really see uh, which direction we'd like to head. So um, we're all just super excited to be here on this next step on this, on this great project. Um, and I am only here really to introduce our folks from TDA, so I'm gonna turn it over to Scott Allman from TDA. There we go. Thank you, Ellen. Um, well, everybody, we're excited to be back. If you, if you were not at the first um, community meeting, my name is Scott Alleman. I'm with Den Design Architecture. I'm an architect there. I'll be the project manager for this project. So I'll be heading the architectural side of, of this project. And Hammond Construction is our construction manager, our CM, our team. Uh, they're not here tonight. Uh, this is kind of our show tonight with the exterior side of the building. Um, so, but we'll get, we'll get started here. Let me, um, okay. So I just agenda wise, we're going to go uh, introduce a little bit about how aesthetics form a space, uh, aesthetically uh, for, as far as exterior architecture, we're going to some examples of what we've done in the past. Um, we're going to review the feedback that we've gotten from our online participants that Ellen was saying. We had 200 respondents for that. So we're gonna, I'll, turn, I'll have Ryan review that. And then we'll, um, then we'll get into our exercise, which you, see up, which you see up here on stage. So just a recap of where we've been, where we're at and where we've been. Um, so today is the 13th. So we're here at our community event. For the people here in the audience, it will be an interactive experience. Um, and then we have some folks joining us online and we will be sending out a survey of the same images here that we're reacting to. In this meeting, we'll be sending out online as well to get feedback from the greater community. We're meeting with the staff all next week. So we're having our second round of staff engagements. So the important thing to uh, remember there is we're meeting with the staff to understand their educational goals and then those goals help us set how we're designing the interior of the building but as we move through the summer we're going to be not only laying out the interior of the building we'll be designing what the exterior of the building is like and that's what we need your input on tonight so that's why we're having you all join us tonight and everybody online join that that's joining us tonight to help us understand that and then uh We'll be in front of the board uh, on the second. We're in front of the board every first Wednesday of the month to give an update. So all, all, all are welcome to come to that meeting as well. So like I said, we're gonna, after this tonight's meeting, we're gonna really put our heads down this summer and work on the design, but we will continue to be in front of the board every month, the first meeting of every month. So we invite everyone to join us there too for an update. So the first slide is just to do a quick kind of, ex I have an anecdote that I want to share with this. Um, we have Riverfront Square up there. Um, when, you, when you visit that space, there's contemporary architecture. I would say that the amphitheater is a pretty contemporary space. But then you have the clock tower. You have the other buildings surrounding it that are more traditional. But the, the architecture together really creates a place. It creates a, a place that people want to visit um, and a place that people want to come down and interact with. And my, my story about that place is that um, I, I actually proposed to my wife at, at here. And um, we, it, was, it was winter time. It was when they had the ice skating rink down there. And she always, uh, I think she always, envisioned it to be at Rockefeller Center. She always wanted to go to New York City and 
and uh, for Christmas. And I thought, well, what's the second best place to do it? You know, and it was it was ice skate the ice skating rink in Cuyahoga Falls. So, um, so we walked down behind the amphitheater there with the trees lit up, and that's where I proposed to her. And then I also um, was in a community band, and I would we did quite a few concerts here for the Italian Fest and things like that. But um, I, I think I think the message or the what I take out of that is it's a place that I wanted to be, and it's a place that um, the architecture and the community and everything about it formed formed that place that that space that you wanted to be. And when we create the new Bola campus, that's that's what we're creating. We're creating a, a place, and it's and what we're trying to derive from our conversations today with the community is what do we want that what do we want that place to feel like? Um, uh, it's going to be a place where people make memories, um, and and how does the community see that architecture reflecting itself, reflecting the community? So when we've done, we've, we've, uh, we're gonna give two examples of two very different ways that um, the community has helped us decide and design uh, our est exterior aesthetics of new schools. Um, and we, we've said this before, you, you, you can't drive around Ohio or Northeastern Ohio and say that's a TDA building um, because we do, every, every building really is designed to fit in with the community itself. Uh, at North Olmsted, um, they were very adamant about, excuse me, they were very adamant about reflecting the architecture on their historic library there. And, um, and that was loud and clear, and we heard that from the community. We had events, we had a community meeting just like this, and that was very apparent in, in the feedback that we got from that. So that's, and that's the direction that we went. So um, the North Olmsted High School, which is on the right, the library is on the left, is a Georgian style. It's a very traditional style, and it it uh, fits it it mimics the architecture of the community, or at least the architecture that they felt was important in that community. Lorraine High School, on the other hand, um, it, the the, Khmer, the com community was very adamant about the architecture being very different. So it uh, the high schools there on the upper slide and the downtown examples of downtown Lorraine. On the southern, uh, or on the not the, the lower slide, and the thought was, let's not let's create an architecture that is looking forward, moving forward, um, uh, representing the future. And there's no right or wrong, that one didn't do it the right way, and one did it the wrong way. There's no right or wrong answer to that. It's truly what the community wants to see in their building. So as we go through this exercise today. That's what we're looking for your feedback on. So we left the first meeting with asking the folks that were here the first time to think about their favorite piece of architecture in Cuyahoga Falls. And I don't know if anyone did their homework. We, had, we got a lot of responses online, which I'm going to turn over to Ryan to go over. But I did want to give this group here that's in person a chance to um, give us some feedback on that. I think this might come down. Does anyone have, anyone come prepared with their favorite piece of architecture? Or anyone want to, um, anyone have an opinion on that? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, okay. Mm hmm You know, it's kind of a mix of old and new, uh, which I thought was really cool. Um, one thing that, you know, I, I think Cuyahoga Falls, you know, that industrial background is important. And being along the river, that's the river makes us different from other communities. Um, so that's that's one thing that I, I think we should bring to the forefront. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, I think the Sheraton Suites is um, um, something that's pretty well known in Northeast Ohio. People will you know, drive down Route 8 and they'll see the 
hotel. Yep. And so I think that's a good advertiser for the city. Yes, go ahead, right there. I like the natatorium. I like when you walk inside, the openness and how grand and the room and the space. Um, it just gives us inviting atmosphere when you walk in and you don't feel crowded, you don't feel confined. It's just open and inviting. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Um, I sent my uh, submission to Ryan on, on Facebook. Uh, the house across the street from the church and behind the museum there has the old style building, but it has the modern dark windows in the frame. I think it's really awesome. Well, if, uh, if there are no others, I will let Ryan... Let me, I'll make sure it's Ryan's turn. Yep. I'll let him present what the feedback that he got on, fr from, from online. And I think every example that was mentioned tonight, we do have an example of it here. Up here so. All right. All right. Good afternoon or evening, everybody. I'll take my mask off from here. So we do thank you for all of the responses that you got that came in from the community online. This is, uh, it was an overwhelming response. I think as Ellen mentioned, we had about 10,000 people who viewed this and went through, they looked at you know, the images, they looked, read some of the text, they understood what was going on. And then about 200 people commented. You know, some people it was the same buildings or similar buildings and I mean, we released this communication over Facebook, which I know many of you saw, but also LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, all of the different social media channels, as well as email to try and gather back as much feedback as we could. And it was, it was really interesting to see what the architecture started pointing to. And I, I think as Scott mentioned, the idea here isn't to design the school to just look like any one of these particular places. But really, it sort of helps the design team. It shapes you know, where the aesthetic style goes, where those in the community think it goes. So they're all very interesting ideas that we can kind of take in and work into the design process. So I didn't list all 200 um, comments up here, but we did get many of them. And I think all of them that we did mention are in here. So we'll just go through that briefly so that you know, we can see it and then maybe even draw a few conclusions just as we're looking at uh, kind of going into the design process here looking into the different aesthetic styles that you know, many of you uh, commented on. So this was one that we got a lot of, a lot of comments on is City Hall. And so right off the bat, um, you're seeing sort of this brick structure, you know, there's lighter white elements, there's glass to this. But uh, again, it's a standout piece in Cuyahoga Falls and I think it's really easy to, um, to recognize that and to see it when you're driving around in the community. You know, up here we've got, uh, I, I included a couple comments, maybe you'll see some of your own comments um, as we go through and just kind of point to some of these things. Um, but again, I think when the city was built in the 50s, this individual says they liked sort of the traditional um, red brick style, and that's something we saw a lot in Cuyahoga Falls. So City Hall was definitely picked up on. Now the police station, you know, literally connected to, right, just, just right around the corner there, is a very similar style where you have this red brick with a, a lighter stone accent, but again, you see it and it just sort of evokes sort of this feeling of downtown Cuyahoga Falls or something that you would see and recognize. You know, some of the commenters pointed to some other buildings that were in the community. I think the new library took a little bit of heat when we were engaging because it was a new looking structure at the time. And again, just the demographic and, and what we were looking at, people seemed to enjoy sort of this red brick style. Now I do have to say it was around when I was taking photos of the police station is when I started being followed. Um, so I knew I was in your house and I did stop to say hello to a couple officers and explain what was going on here. So nothing untoward, I'm just taking a lot of pictures of your police department. <laughs> I, 
did see them kind of moving around downtown a couple times. So um, the police station being a good example. The natatorium was brought up. And again, another iconic structure that has this very interesting sort of a, a statement entry. There's a lot of glass. You've got the integrated brick into that. And then some different mason, masonry styles uh, going on in the outside. You just get this big open feel in that entrance. The clock tower was another one that was brought up as just this recognizable symbol of downtown Cuyahoga Falls. The front street clock, we got a lot of commentary coming back on, on that style. And then 122 Broad Street, which beautiful old historic house. And I think, you know, as, uh, as we commented here, you just don't really see this kind of brick styling in buildings anymore. And that was a comment that was shared actually across structures. So you can notice some of the detailing, and I'm sure all of you are very familiar with this building, but just the detailing around the windows, you've got a lot of intricate work uh, going on in the exterior, sort of celebrating that red brick. The works, I haven't had a chance to visit this place, um, but another theme that became apparent over the course of, you know, kind of getting this feedback is that there was this blending of some of the historic structures that seemed very important to some people, as well as you know, the newness of the buildings. So it's kind of a connection historically to, to what was in the past. The next front and second on Portage Trail. So I think the detailing and the brickwork, uh, as well as you know, the, the numbering, the names uh, at the top of the buildings, it just sort of lends this, this interesting feel to that space down there. And you know whenever you're there, when you look at those historic structures. I didn't get a chance to watch the movie The Scrooge before I came here, but I probably should have. But the cool names on them. The Oakwood Cemetery Chapel. You know, again, another beautiful old brick building. Um, downtown, you're looking at some of the windows, and there's actually this really interesting and, and kind of beautiful detailing around the arches sort of these elliptical arches and, and the way that the brick is cut and used there. Burntwood Tavern. I think they um, take our lunch order most times we're down here, so we'll probably put their kids through college by the time we're finished. But it's just an interesting blend of sort of that historic property, you know, incorporating the river element, and I know there's a lot of interesting interior designs in terms of um, some of the historic structure that was there um, you know, originally with, uh, I think, forget if it was the mill that was, or the powerhouse inside that as it was restored. So sort of this blending of the old and new. And then the fire station number one, you know, again, similar style, but starting to point to sort of these statement entrances and different elements that jump out that kind of tell you where you are, but still using a, a similar aesthetic. And something that's probably Interesting to note, I think many of these structures were almost within like a mile and a half radius of each other, right? So even when photographing this, I was walking from building to building to building to building, and so many of them were close by. Another being the riverfront archway, just down right on the river. There were a number of comments. Many people talked about how this particular place held a lot of different memories for them, for folks who had gone back in the community. So again, sort of hailing that history and kind of a look back as a favorite place. And then these concrete street signs, which are very interesting and probably unique to Cuyahoga Falls, but you know, is an interesting example of wayfinding in the community and different um, you know, ways to figure out where you are, what streets, but this was something that came up um, among a number of those comments of so just how interesting sort of these historic old street signs were. And I think many of them have been taken down, but you can still find them you know, here and there if you look. And there were a number of people, it's not just red brick kind of pointing to, you know, this traditional sort of um, architectural style. There were other projects that were outliers, right? So it wasn't all red brick. And this being one of the examples, the Associated Materials Building. So again, still inhabited, but pointing back to that mid-century, kind of the 1950s, like a retro style aesthetic. You know, there were a couple people who had commented that this was a standout building that sticks out in their mind. Um, it's just an interesting building that comes to mind when thinking about um, Cuyahoga Falls. So again, it's not uh, uniformly all brick, but again, you can see some of these interesting sort of statement entrances and, and you know, different elements that the, you, know, you see that really jump out to you when you view a building like this. 
And then the Falls Medical Building. This one was like very highly rated. And I understand it's demolished now. I mean, outside of Rex's Tower, this was the one that was commented on so much. But really interesting, again, the statement style building where, you know, it's not brick. You've got probably a precast concrete tile, you know, interesting engraving and just the standout piece that when you drive past it, you know, you really recognize it. It comes to the fore. It makes that statement when you see it. But uh, this former round building, this was something that was commented on quite a bit as something that jumped to mind. And so just kind of bringing all of that together, you know, of the 10,000 people who saw it, and you've got 200 plus comments of people sharing ideas and buildings and why they liked it. Again, this was a smattering of it. But when you get so many comments, it starts to point, point in a certain aesthetic direction. And so a few things that we thought were interesting really taking away from this sort of pre-visual preference exercise is there seemed to be a love of history among a lot of people who commented. So they thought the old archways were interesting, the old architectural style was interesting. You know, these statement buildings, as we said, something that really stands out, whether that was an entrance on a particular building or just a building in general making that statement. You know, a lot of intricate brickwork, glass, white stone elements were called out as being, you know, something that really stood out to a lot of people. Um, structures that visually echoed each other in terms of your large institutions like City Hall, the police station, and some of these, again, larger structures, um, they echoed each other. So that aesthetic looked very similar instead of being something that was very set apart. And then in a lot of them, it pointed towards a more traditional architectural style, and that was something that we heard from a lot of the comments. That doesn't mean that's set in stone, so to speak, or we have to go in that direction, but just something that we heard from a lot of the community uh, in response to this initial exercise. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Abby, and we're going to talk a little bit about the visual preference exercise that we have planned for tonight, um, and hopefully you find some of those responses interesting. Thank you. I'm Abby Ranieri. I'm an architect at TDA. Um, part of this design team, I focus on um, educational design for TDA. And so you heard Scott talk a lot about memories and placemaking, and you heard Ryan talk a lot about architecture and the feedback we got about the architecture of Cuyahoga Falls. And what we find a lot when we're doing these exercises in different communities and different school districts is how much those two things are blended together, memories and place or memories and architecture. So sometimes it might be a favorite building of someone, not necessarily because of the architecture, but because of the nostalgia or because of the memories or experiences that they've had in those places. And so that's very interesting to think about as we go through this exercise, not only what the building looks like, but the fact that it's going to be a community building and a lot of students will make a lot of early memories there. A lot of community members will gather there. So we've got a lot going on, some, some having to do with just the aesthetic and some having to do with things that are a lot deeper as far as placemaking is concerned. So we're gonna get into an exercise. Um, the folks that are here tonight, we're gonna do an exercise in person. And so it's called a visual preference exercise. Um, it's used to obtain feedback on design options. So it's a series of image pairings. And we're gonna ask you all to consider each pairing of images and select your favorite image and then tell us why. So, Tactically, the way that that's going to work is we are going to pass out eight and a half by 11 packets. Those will be coming around in just a moment. And so those have image pairings. And we will ask you to place a green dot on the image that you prefer. And then take a pen, we'll have pens too, and just jot down why you prefer that image. And maybe you can't speak to the positives of why you like one image. Maybe it's easier to explain why you don't like the other image. But there's lines on either side of the sheet for you to speak to why you picked the image you picked. And you'll see there's, there's different things that we're looking at as we're looking at these image pairings. It might be traditional architecture versus contemporary architecture. Some things to maybe pay attention to might be the shape of the roofs or the colors of the buildings or the materials that are used in the buildings. But really just go with your gut, pick which one appeals to you, and then try to think about why. So we'll ask you all to do that individually first. 
And then once you've had enough time to do that as an individual and kind of take your time with that, we'll have you come up to the front and those same pairings are shown on these boards. And we'll have you also use the same green dot to essentially show your vote on the boards. And then before we leave, we'll get a sense of within this room, which image did everyone prefer? And we'll have a group discussion about each of them about why. Um, before we get started with that, for those folks who are listening um, online that couldn't be here tonight, we will be issuing this as a digital survey as well. So you will have the opportunity to select these images and talk a little bit about why you selected them online. So that'll be pushed out um, after this uh, presentation tonight and it'll be live for um, at least a week, per perhaps two. So you'll have plenty of time to participate if you weren't able to be here tonight. So our team members right now are gonna come around with those eight and a half by 11 packets. And then uh, the TDA team will be around if you wanna talk with any of us, if you have any questions. And then we'll allow maybe 20 or so minutes for this. And, and we'll see how everyone's doing um, as time goes, but we'll uh, dive right in and then we'll get back together as a group. So thank you. Thank <laughs> you. 
Once you've finished with your exercise, if you wouldn't mind bringing it up to us and making your preferences known up on our boards up front, we would very much appreciate it.
It's less than three thousand. Oh, it's less than three thousand. My mind was telling me twenty five hundred, but I don't trust that. But you said it was less than three thousand. Okay, so it's so yeah, because I've seen like the newer high schools you can like do that. And I think that information is so great. And I think like I think that in order to like make an assignment on like paper and be successful, you have to write essays and like actually do it. I think you have to have a minimum of like four assignments. Oh, I do remember. So, um, yes. Yeah. But I did know it was bigger, but. That's good. Thank no, you. Thank you for. I'm glad yeah. that I found that for sure. Yeah. I'm like, who is saying you like this? Is so happy to see. Yeah. It's a great find. The ones that put it on the line, and you got to call it in and say, put it on the line and watch. So, oh, oh, throwing things at me. I'm really mad at you. This is my problem if you're in the classroom right now. Okay. Yeah, so you're going to walk it. Okay, is that okay? No, it's fine. I just want to make sure I know the way I can stand that way. Do you need green dots? I do. I like You want me to flip it? I'll just mute it, and then when I see you go for it, I'll unmute it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not allowed. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, because it's not allowed in here, but I don't think it matters. <laughs> yeah, thanks for watching, everyone online. <laughs> That's all that matters. Ooh, black tigers. Yes. Black tigers pride. Tigers, baby. Yeah. Top tiger. And since you weren't top tiger last time. Oh.
Okay. We're going to do a little reporting out. So it looks like uh, on our first one here, oh, by the way, uh, I'm sure not many of you have seen me yet. My name is Vince Coons. I'm an architectural designer at TDA. Obviously, I'm on the Cuyahoga Falls project, so we're working as a team, but um, first and foremost, the person whose hands are going to be on this information the most will probably be mine. So this is incredibly helpful, and I thank you for your feedback. Um, starting off with uh, our first set of options here, it looks like we've got maybe a one to two split. So if there's anyone, obviously we have your feedback anonymously, so you don't have to say anything, but if there's anyone who has strong feelings about either of these, um, raise your hand and I'll come to you. So that for the on the first one, the building on the right, I think that what drew everybody to it is what we were seeing in the presentation. It's a combination of that classic brick and limestone that is what we see in the community. Um, we saw a number of those examples. That was one of my favorites. Um, it, very traditional. It's going to look like a timeless building tomorrow. It's going to look like a timeless building in 50 years. It's going to look like a timeless building in 100 years. Good evening. I think the uh, building on the left is uh, wonderfully contemporary, and I think it represents the future and the opportunities of the future. And I strongly believe that um, the new buildings need to have that new environment that represents the new technologies, both in the building materials and design and the opportunities for the students. Um, I remember Dr. Nichols talking about it's a whole new environment for education. And I believe that a more contemporary building reflects that opportunity for the future. I'm an old man speaking here. I, I will have been in high school like 60 years ago. So um, one of the things I've learned over the years is that things change and if you think back to when you were going to high school some of you it's not that long ago some of you it's been quite a while and um, some of the wonderful opportunities examples that tda has shown us and the team um, along with hammond um, my heart is to tell them that they need to dream big and I know that's what our superintendent wants too, is to dream big. And uh, forgive me for taking so much time, but it just so happens that those, those two um, images that are there, I like both of them from an architectural standpoint. They do reflect, the, the one on the right reflects the historic nature of uh, wherever that building was built, I'm guessing. And, uh, but my heart leans towards the future and the opportunities of the future. And to me, the one on the right, you'll forgive me, is more like uh, the old, the history. And, and the uh, one on the left represents the spaceship to the future. Thank you. Anyone else? <laughs> When I look at both of those buildings, the one on the left to me looks very cold and stark, and the one to the right to me looks very warm and inviting. So. Okay. So a little bit of the same. Obviously, these are two TDA buildings. Um, I see there's someone who put a dot on the line up front. Does that person have an opinion they'd like to share? <laughs> okay. Slide number three. It looks like we're pretty heavily leaning toward the net. Can anyone tell me why? Thank <laughs> you. 
So I was kind of split on this one because they both have the modern, like I agree with what he was saying, the modern, but also with the old materials. But I picked the Nat just because the signage is cool. And like, you know, it's the Natatorium, but people call it the Nat because you just see it there. So I like that. Thank you. Um, I had some input with my daughter and we were discussing, she's in fifth grade this year and she'll be in sixth next. And so we were discussing the two buildings and we both agreed on the Nat as well. We felt like the building on the left had such a front exterior or a flat exterior that it wasn't as inviting. And to us, that was more like a shop that you might go into, whereas the Nat had this grand entrance and it just seemed more inviting and more natural light. Thank you. So yeah, this one is a pair of contemporary buildings. I know that the Nat came up a lot in, um, in our survey. And one of the other things that um, we wanted to point to is and it comes up a lot is maybe the roof shape. Maybe by a show of hands, do we, is that maybe, yeah, that's it. So yeah, two contemporary buildings, one of them obviously very beloved in Cuyahoga Falls. And um, you're not the first group of people that's very fond of a pitched roof. Speaking of pitched roofs, <laughs> opinions on these two. I like the one on the left, it's, it's super traditional, but I preferred the one on the right because I liked the mix of materials with the brick and the glass and the wood. Um, it, it actually reminded me of Nature Realm in the Valley, which is very warm and inviting and incorporates the landscape around it. So I think it's an interesting building to sort of spark creativity and is very warm and inviting to the eye, but I, I love that it incorporates all of those different materials together in sort of like a harmonious way. Where the one on the left is, it's just very stalwart to me and a little bit darker. <laughs> okay, so yeah, uh, up on the, on the board, we've got two images of two front entry styles and both of them do incorporate quite a bit of glass. And as you can see, that can be done in two very, very different ways. I, uh, I totally agree with Jessica. I think the, the one on the right is, is cool. It's open. It's inviting. The one on the left almost looks like you're, you're walking into a dark cave. Um, and, and, you know, I, I guess we want our students to be excited about going in and, you know, enthusiastic. I think the one on the right just brings that out quite a bit more than the one on the left. I'm wondering if we would have been equally excited had there not been trees on the one on the right, because I really think that is what sold many of us, the combination of nature with architectural elements that are varied. It's just very warm and welcoming. Had we put some different kinds of landscaping around the other one, I feel maybe a few more people would have perhaps voted for it, but this one had everything. It says, come and visit Mother Nature, come and be a part of our warm and welcome environment. And I know that there is a huge push on trees. People are discovering more and more about trees and the connections to humans. So I think that can be a part of the cell. And I'm hoping you folks will incorporate that as well. I think this is another great opportunity, maybe by a show of hands, if we like the trees and maybe that's why we picked it. Yes, here we go. And obviously we can see up on the board that that was incredibly popular as well. So here is another version of both looking at our roof and looking at how we might want to think about windows up front. Do we have over here? The one on my le on the left was actually my favorite design in all of the ones that were put up there. And I think it's, a couple of factors. One, it echoes some of what we love about the Nat. So it would feel very 
appropriate for the community. It blends some of the tradition with some newer design elements. And what really struck me, and maybe because it's the time of day that this photo was taken, but when you can see inside, the idea of having a building like that on Portage Trail when an event is going on in the building and the community can see active learning and active events at the building, I think would engage the community really well. Absolutely. I too prefer the one on the left. One of the things that happens in uh, Northern Ohio, in case you never noticed, it rains. And so many buildings you can't get into unless you get drenched walking from the parking lot. And you know, the, the building on the right, you park way out in the lot, and by the time I get inside, I need to change of clothes. So uh, I, you know, some kind of covered walkway into the building. I also like the arched roofs because uh, every flat roof in Northern Ohio leaks. They do, so. I think this is another great chance for a show of hands. How do we feel about the uh, sort of portico entry on the, uh, yes, a lot of hands for that. Any other opinions on these two? Okay, so next option, maybe looking at a little bit of color and again at glazing. Anyone want to take a stab at it? It was so hard to pick which one I liked better out of the two because I honestly don't really care for either one. <laughs> so, and I don't know if a lot of people felt that way either, but yes. the buildings just feel super squatty. And I, I will say the one thing about having pitched roofs is it, it's not only good from a design and architectural standpoint with holding water and all of those things, but it draws your eye upward. It feels more open. When you have such a linear focus, feels squatty and wide. And I think when you have something pointing upward, it's it's almost a little bit more hopeful or that I feel like they're both just kind of depressing. I, know, I like the incorporation of the color, but it, they just feel, I don't know, I, I did not care for it. It was hard to pick, like if I had to pick one, I picked the one with the color because I felt like it was a little more inspiring, but they're both like, I, they both seem just very squatty. I don't know, a better word. <laughs> We also agreed with that. We picked the one on the left, but had lots of discussion. Um, the flat roof we didn't care for. We almost wished that we could take the one on the left with the windows and the color and put it with the brick and kind of mesh the two together and then obviously a pitched. So that's what we thought. Okay, so by a show of hands. How many had a hard time picking which one they liked less? That's what I thought. How many picked, of the, those of you that picked the one on the left, how many of you picked it because of the color? Okay. And lastly, if maybe that color was amongst the brick, how many of you would have picked the color with brick instead? Okay, just a few. Any other opinions on these? Windows. This was a no brainer for me. <laughs> I picked the one with the arches because all right angles are boring, boring. Looks like the consensus was with you on the boards too. <laughs> Everyone else basically same camp, show of hands. Yeah, we've got two on the right. Do you want to share? Or do you feel ashamed? So I don't like the square windows really at all. Even on the left side, I like the arch, but not the square, because um, it's just very industrial. But on the right, I like that there was the modern piece in the back. So that's why I supported that, not for the front part. Anyone else? No? Okay. And last but certainly not least, red brick versus grays. Who has thoughts? 
Oh, we have another one on the line. I want to hear from you. Um, I chose the red brick because of our history in Cuyahoga Falls. I think there's a way to take that red brick and still incorporate modern pieces and make it into a beautiful modern building, but keep it in blending with everything else that we have here in the falls. Um, when we think of home, which I think is why all of us are here, <laughs> we love this city, we love this district, and that's what we think of with this community. So that's why I picked it. Oh, sorry. Um, excuse me for hitting the chair. <laughs> Um, I wanted to put it on the line also, but I was told I was not able to do that. But, um, and, and actually, I, I like both. Um, I like the brick from the historic um, factor. Um, also, brick is a wonderful material to work with. Um, unfortunately, it's considerably more costly to lay up brick that's shown there compared to the concrete block on the right side. I like the creativity that is shown in the um, masonry that's on the right side. And so I just wanted to say I, I really like them both. I was just gonna say very quickly that the gray reminds me of Stowe High School, so I have an adverse reaction to it. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. So I did put it on the line because of the reason Scott said I like the color, um, but I like the texturing and the kind of the, the way it makes it just look a little bit different, but just what Scott said. I appreciate on the brick as far as making, again, classic, sturdy, it's going to last. Although I really liked the ingenuity and the creativity of the right. The one thing I had a problem with, with the inlaid brick, is I see nesting things there. Because I guess in my classroom today, I had bees coming in. I can just see all kinds of things nesting in there. And while I love nature, I don't want it in my classroom. So maybe by another show of hands, if we were to incorporate some of the texturing and patterning from the right with the color palette of that traditional red brick. Would that be something we'd like to see? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, so thank you very much for your participation. I know that a lot of, when you're talking about aesthetics, it's a lot about um, your opinion, right? And it's hard to sometimes nail down why, but I think you all articulated really well why you preferred what you preferred. So thank you for that. So what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna compile all your comments and reasons why that you included on the eight and a half by 11 packets. We're also gonna add that in with whatever feedback we get from the folks who do this activity online. So they'll have the opportunity to vote and also to type in why they like what they like. So our design team will take that information in. And then as Scott mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, we're going to, over the summer, be hard at work taking all of this information we've been gathering over the last month or so and putting it into our first stab at the design. We call it schematic design. That will be due. Um, our due date is at the end of the summer for that. And so right when you get back at the beginning of next school year, sometime in the fall, we will come back to you and present our first stab at this design. And we are gonna show you how we used your feedback in it. And we'll have another meeting like this. Things gonna look like at that time. So thank you very much for coming out tonight. We really appreciate it. I don't know if you had anything else, Ellen. Um, so just thank you for your time. We know it's finally a beautiful night out. So we appreciate that you chose to spend it inside with us. And thank you for your thoughtful and really well-spoken comments. Thank you. <laughs>